Kenya you are church in the land of Kenya mighty God the gone are the days that Lord your house will be despised that father your ministers will be despised that Lord the men and women you have anointed will be despised fight their battles oh my God refresh their anointing oh God give them a revelation towards your work towards Lord the land of Kenya towards the people that you have called them to serve in Jesus name in the mighty name of Jesus we bless you Lord and we honor you you are worthy and you are precious you are so wonderful mighty God we love you Jesus we love you Lord I want us also to pray for the Balm of Gilead International Ministry family let us pray for the Balm of Gilead international ministry family in the mighty name of Jesus just raise your voice and speak a word over this ministry our headquarters at the United States of Min- of the America here in Kenya and all the fellowships that are running under the fraternity of Balm of Gideon in the mighty name of Jesus uh, Father we bless your name Lord we glorify you uh, thank you Jesus for Palm of Gilead. I thank you Father for this ministry mighty God. It has been a solution for somebody. It has been a blessing for a people. It has brought about healing to your children. Lord you have used this ministry to empower families. Ah my God I pray that you continue doing mighty and great things using this ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name name of Jesus we pray Lord for Bogim International Logger in the United States of America in Jesus name uh, may you give them the strength to continue uh, may you give them the strength to serve uh, may you give them Lord the glory in the mighty name of Jesus uh, cover them and hide them against every powers uh, every and every oh my God weapon uh, that rises against their altar in Jesus name in the mighty name of Jesus give them victory Uh, give them to expand in Jesus name for you are worthy and you are mighty in the mighty name of Jesus we bless your name my God here in Kenya we have seen you we have seen your power we have seen your healing we have heard you speak mightily in our lives and in the nation of Kenya and beyond mighty God I pray that your grace your grace your grace your grace your anointing your power your spirit may you continue to abide with us for the vision that you have given us oh God in the mighty name of Jesus I thank you Lord for every minister in the mighty name of Jesus called into the ministry of Bogim worldwide in the name of Jesus wherever they are mighty God fight their battle El Shaddai supply them O God according to your riches and power in the mighty name of Jesus Lord my father may you fight for every marriage in the family of Bogim may you unite them may your love of God may it work in every marriage every family every businessman those that are employed may they operate in favor the favor that works for Bogim may it work for them in the name of Jesus for your glory mighty God in the name of Jesus we bless you we pray for our services we pray that Lord our services will be services of encounters services of power services of dominion services of healing and great breakthroughs in the mighty name of Jesus we bless your name we honor you Lord for you are great and wonderful in the mighty name of Jesus uh, you can say amen wherever you are in Jesus name 
I take this wonderful opportunity to welcome you this afternoon <coughs> to our lunch, our service. Uh, today is a special day. Today is a powerful day. And the Lord God is at work. And as he works for others, you are not forgotten. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are not at the wrong place. Uh, the Lord has a purpose for you this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. I want also to acknowledge all the leaders, the men and women of God that the Lord God has lifted in this house to see that the work of God is moving uh, wherever you are. May the Lord God continue to supply your needs. May he empower you and grace you even for greater works in future in the mighty name of Jesus. I am also humbled and honored to acknowledge the presence of our Papa, the Prophet of God, Prophet Caleb Wekesa, together with Pastor Rosemary Wekesa. May the Lord God continue to use you in a mighty special way for generations and for nations in Jesus' mighty name. Indeed, you are a wonderful blessing to this church, to us and to me individually in a mighty special way. May God bless you in Jesus name. Uh, so today is a good day that the Lord has made. That we will rejoice in him. And I believe that those that are following online wherever you are, you are happy. You are enjoying the day that the Lord has given you. Those that are here, <coughs> I know that it is not in vain. The Lord God is doing something new in your life. The Lord God is working mighty things in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, so today I want to talk about I want to talk about prayer. And uh, prayer in simple terms uh, according to how I am made to understand it means a communication between uh, between man and God. So prayer is a communication uh, whereby you are talking to God and God is talking back to you. Remember, uh, for any communication to be effective, uh, the both sides has to be, uh, there has to be, if I'm talking to you, you gotta be uh, uh, responding to what I'm saying. You don't have necessarily to say anything uh, but I have got to know that we are together in whatever a discussion or conversation that we are having. So prayer is a communication to God. Prayer is communicating to God. We have many languages that we can communicate. We have many ways uh, that we can talk, communicate and relate to each other here on earth with the men and uh, uh, <coughs> With also animals, I have seen people who can uh, do that as well. They can very well communicate to animals and uh, they respond. So if animals can respond to the communication between man and animal, then we ought to have that understanding and know that whenever we enter to a moment of prayer, Whenever we want to pray to God, that the Lord God is always at, at, attentive to our prayers. I've not seen or I've not thought of a parent who can ignore their children when they are addressing issue to them. I don't know of a parent who cannot give attention to their children when they are talking to them. So God being our father God being our father he hears to our prayer and uh, whenever we pray we have to bear in mind that the Lord God is listening and if he is listening because prayer is communication and then he will do something he will say something that will confirm that he has heard our prayer there is no better way that we can have 
a fellowship with God is not in prayers. It is only when we are praying that we can be able to communicate or have an encounter with God. It is only when we are in prayers that we can experience uh, the, uh, we can we, we, we can uh, partake the revelatory experiences of God. And one place in the Bible, in the book of Luke chapter number 3, verses number 21. The Bible says, When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, and as he was praying, the Bible says, heaven was open. When he was praying, heaven was open. So whenever we are praying, whenever we give our moment to God, to communicate to God, there are things that happen in the spirit. There are things that in the spirit for instance when Jesus was praying after he was baptized the Bible says the heavens were open the heavens were open my prayer is that whenever you go to prayer may the heavens respond to you may the heavens open up to your prayers may the heavens respond to whatever the cry you have to present before God to whatever the petition you are taking before God when you approach the throne of mercy may the heavens open for you great things happen in the Bible whenever prayer was associated every time in the Bible there was a prayer there was something significant that happened because God hears prayer God hears prayer so when we pray let us not just pray uh, in doubt let us not pray in doubt pray in your mind knowing that whoever you are talking to he is able to hear not only is he able to hear but he is able to answer your prayer he is able to do to you what you are asking him to do and if not the Lord God has a way of speaking back to us the Lord God has a way of talking back so every moment spent in prayer is not a wasted moment in the book of the same book chapter number 9 Luke chapter number 9 verses number 18 9 18 the book of uh, Luke the Bible says once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him he asked them who do the crowd say that I am who do the crowds say that I am Jesus in his life he is known to be a man of prayer he is known to be a man who dedicated his many hours and private time in prayer so why would Jesus pray and he himself was called a time Jesus uh, most of the time that Jesus prayed was supposed to serve as a lesson to the people that were following him. Jesus did not need to pray.
pray. He was called with all the power. He was called with all the ability. He was called in the human flesh. So he didn't need to pray. But most of the time because he was in the flesh. He had to live or rather to set an example so that the people that were following him. The people that were living around him could know that the source of power, the source of miracles, the source of answers in life, the source of solutions, the source of everything that we so ever desire in life is hidden in a relationship with God. Remember, we, we can never be, we can never say, or rather, purport to be friend if there is no communication in between us. There has to be a communication for our relationship to keep on moving. Remember, the Bible says that two cannot walk together unless they agree. So for us to have a walk with God, we have to come to a point whereby we are willing to have a communication with God. We are willing to have a relationship with God. We are willing to hear and speak with God. So that we have, because how will we know when we are supposed to be making a step when we are supposed to be doing this how will we be enlightened if we do not receive from him he was God with all the power but in all he valued intimacy with the spiritual with the spiritual world so for us to come to a level whereby we can know the mind of God, it is in prayer that we will hear what God is saying. It is in prayer that we will represent our needs and our petitions unto God. In the same book, chapter number 11, verse 1, the Bible says, he was praying in a certain place and when he seized one of his disciples said to him Lord teach us to pray as John taught his disciples this disciple that approached Jesus he may have seen something that uh, he may have seen something that was so peculiar. He may have seen something that was so special with the prayer life of Jesus that he desired. He desired so much to have that encounter with God. And the only way to do that was if he knew how to pray. It was if he would into a moment of prayer and have to experience what Jesus was experiencing. You know, one day there was this man, old man who had a son who was, uh, he had a condition and when he, he came and presented the son to the disciples of Jesus, the disciples dis uh, tried to cast out or rather to pray for the son of this old man. But in as much as they were doing whatever they were doing, nothing was happening. And it happened that Jesus came down from the mountain. Remember, he was from prayers. So when he came and found this man, and after he had healed this man, he told the disciples that there are things that cannot happen if we will not involve prayer and fasting. Every man, every woman that you have heard under the sun, every powerful woman that you have heard uh, 
woman and man that we have had their testimony behind their testimonies behind their miracles behind every prophetic word that the prophet of God speaks in this house there is a prayer there is a prayer there is a prayer so for us to get to that point for us to get to where we so very much desire to be for us to acquire that power for us to acquire that spiritual enlightenment we have to dedicate our time we have to give our life and soak ourselves in prayer there is power in prayers I always say no prayer no power no prayer no power you know the disciples of Jesus they they thought that Jesus may have visited a certain witch doctor maybe perhaps he was given some portions for him to do some healing for him to do some miracles i don't know what was running into their mind because maybe they saw jesus lay hands and things happened and when this young man was brought to them they thought that they will just do what they see jesus do and something will happen they didn't know that behind those miracles behind the testimonies there is a time there is a time of prayer that Jesus had set apart to source for power so prayer 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 is a source that can introduce and usher you into power many of the things that happened in the bible they happened under and behind the influence of prayer under the influence of prayer in the book of acts chapter number 1 the by uh, chapter number 14 uh sorry 11 verse 5 the book of the acts of the apostles chapter number 11 verse 5 the bible says i was in the city of Joppa praying and in a trance i saw a vision something descending like a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners and it came down to me I'm gonna emphasize on prayer, uh, praying and the vision. The servant of God was in prayer. He was praying that at a moment he got to see a vision. Child of God, for us to experience spiritual visions, we have to stick and to sink into prayer. We have to give our life, our time into prayer for our spiritual eyes to be enlightened. When we pray, we begin to see. When we were seeing our failure, when the moment we pray, we begin to see our victory. Why? Because now things are being revealed. Because you cannot speak to God and he chooses to be silent on you. You cannot commit to pray and the Lord ignores your prayer. I always say that in heaven uh, there is no dustbin of prayer. There is no uh, more special prayer than the other. The Lord God is attentive. The Bible says call unto me and I will answer. Why? Because I am attentive. I am attentive. 
believe I am waiting I am listening so that if anybody will call so it tells me that if I choose to call him if I choose to raise my voice unto him uh, then he will answer he has assured that whenever you pray whenever you call whenever you call for him he will answer and not only will he answer he will show you he will show you so if you want to see in the spirit if you want to see in the spirit we have to call upon him we have to call on him you may have called him in the morning you may have called him in the midday you may have called him five one hours ago but i came to tell you keep on calling upon him until you are able to see until you are able to feel that indeed i am touching somewhere i am throwing my punches and i feel like i am hitting something i feel that i am hitting a certain target i am doing something prayers are power prayers are channels prayers they bring us closer to god the more we pray the more we draw to him he's saying draw near to me and i will draw near to you you know he created us and gave, he gave us a spirit because he is a spirit he created us so that he can have a fellowship he can have he can have a communion with us so for us to receive from him if you ever want anything good from god if you ever want to see god in our life then we ought to persist in prayer we ought to persist into seeking because he's saying he who seeks finds he who seeks finds call unto me and i will answer i will show you so the greater the bigger part is on us we are not seeing because we are not calling unto him we are not being shown what we want to see because we are not calling unto him maybe we are calling but we are making every wrong call in our lives every time something happens the first thing that comes in your mind is to go and get a loan the first thing that comes in your mind is to join a certain circle so that you can be safe but things will have been better if only we can call unto him calling unto him some of us may be like that disciple who went unto Jesus and he told him Jesus show me how to call unto him because I desire to see things in the spirit I desire to be shown some things in my life I desire to see but then I don't know how to call I need to know how to call prayers there is no such powerful weapon like prayers there are people whose life have changed just because of a prayer i have seen people in this house being healed delivered their life being changed i am a living testimony why because the prophet of god prayed the prophet of god is praying the prophet of god he is calling unto him and when he calls the lord is showing him 
nyuma uh, that maggi you need to do this and this for that to work uh, pastor dan mr so and so madam you need to do this you need to come back here you need to activate your miracle by doing one two three why because after he calls he is shown the moment he calls heavens respond power moves people there are times things can be so hard there are times battles can arise there are times you can feel weary weak there are times the world can really storm you at a way you never expected but just because of a prayer just because of a prayer your life remains to be sustained the lord fights for you because there is a prayer that is being made somewhere you know some of us it is not because we pray so much but it has taken somebody in the gap to pray when our marriages are standing our businesses are moving our life are moving it is because there is a prayer that is being made some place the power of prayer is beyond imaginable measures what prayer can do it will take a lot of time for you to examine how did this woman get healed she was with the tumor but the moment the man of god prayed that tumor dried up how did it happen that the prophet spoke a word and the life of kelly was totally transformed how was it that the prophet just spoke a word and a woman out of a word in her womb something was conceived and now she is pregnant how did that happen the prayer we make before god i was i was on my way somewhere and i saw a certain vehicle it was written a prayer a day drives the devil away a prayer a day a prayer a minute one prayer can change your life totally from where you are to a place you never imagined yourself to be why because the moment we pray number one, our eyes are open remember he is saying call unto me and i will show you i will show you the moment you pray you begin to see that i don't deserve to be here i don't deserve to be doing this your eyes are open the lord god begins to show you ways he begins to show you how you can expand your business how you can keep your marriage how you can contain your children why because the moment you called the heavens responded the heavens responded some of us have been praying in years nothing is happening and we feel like we want to give up because things are not the more we pray the more the battles arise the more the situation gets worse I want you to remind I want to remind you of a man called Lazarus. Martha made a prayer to Jesus. And he told him your friend is sick. But he chose not to show up 
at that day, at that particular moment. He chose not to go that day. You called him the first year. He is not responding. The second year, my friend, child of God, don't give up. Keep on trusting on him. Keep on in prayer. What is cooking up for you will shock the world. What the Lord has in preparation for you will change your life totally. Don't give up. Don't stop praying. Just keep in prayers. Just keep trusting upon him. Just keep on calling upon him. And when the appointed time will come, there is always an appointed time. Then remember, he is the Lord God of all seasons. In our seasons of harvest, he remains to be God. In our seasons of droughts, he remains to be, to be God. Don't you ever let the, doubt, the droughts in your life, don't you ever let any seasons in your life to begin preaching unto you. You know how far he has brought you. You may not know how far he is taking you. But you are a child of the promise. And he who has promised, he is faithful. Not only is he faithful, he is able to do it. He is able to sustain you. Don't walk out on God. Up your prayer life just because you have been praying for three years and nothing is happening, child of God. There is a miracle on your way, there is a healing on your way, there is something on your way. Ah, there is something, there is something, there is an answer because He has given us a word of surety that. If you call, I will answer. I will answer. I will answer. He did, he did not say call. Call your papa. Call your mama. He did not say call your boss. He did not say call for people to come and help you. He did not say call somebody. He did not say call your husband, call your marriage. He said call unto me and I will answer. If he say that, God can never be confused. If he said it, he knew that he was in the position one to hear you two to answer and to show he was able he was able so how then can we call unto him you know you don't need the whole day to pray unto God you don't need to suffer in fasting for 72 days calling upon God. The moment Daniel began praying, the Bible says that the first day he began his fast, the Lord God released his answer. Why? Because he had now the problem was the principalities the problem was the principalities that were fighting against the answer of Daniel you know some of us as, as I just said earlier we have been praying for years we have been calling and we get to a point of asking God where are you, God? Where is your glory? Where is your power? Where is your answer? But at the times, it could be that the principalities, the powers are holding over your answer. 
answer. They are holding over your miracle. They are holding over uh, that answer that you have been waiting for long. But Daniel chose to continue. Ja Daniel chose to continue. He continued praying. He continued praying. I don't know if he had planned to pray for 21 days. But this man prayed. He continued praying. Because he knew that whoever he was praying to was able to hear, to answer, and to show him. We are praying. We so very much rely on the spiritual directions. You know, every prospered people outside there, the landlords, the tycoons, and all the big men in our society, they are moving at the pace that they are moving on because they, are, they have a spiritual eye upon their lives. Some run to the witches. Some runs for the portions to protect their prosperity. They are, uh, to protect the, themselves and whatever they protect because they know that outside ear is a matter of battles. The strong to have it all. So if we as the children of this faith will be now and choose not to call unto him, then how will we be able to see? How will we be able to receive direction? How will we be able to be led in the right path? Remember somewhere in the prayer that Jesus is teaching the disciples, it says, lead me not into temptations. So for me to live a victorious life, for me to live a life of testimony, then he has got to be leading me. Leading me not into temptation, but leading me rather into something more interesting. Leading me into my healing, leading me into my possession, leading me to somewhere where when I get there, then I will experience my peace. I will experience my power. I will experience I will experience a certain change in my life. Why? Because he is leading me because he knows the way. God knows where the answer of your life lies. He knows where the answer of your marriage lies. He has all the answers of all the questions that you are asking. So if, you, if at all you have to get that information, then the only place that you can receive this information is through him. It's only from God that your answers will be answered. So, when we pray, when we pray, we ought to have that confidence that the Lord God is listening. That he is willing to show us. That he is willing to do for us because he is always faithful. He is always waiting. When will you call unto me so that I can show you that, that this journey you are planning is going to kill you? When will you call unto me so that I can show you that this way that you have chosen is leading you into shame and destruction? So he is always waiting. And the moment we call upon him, he responds, Father, we thank you. We bless your name for you are God. You are God of our prosperity. You are the Lord God of all our solution. We bless you. We trust you and we exalt your name. Thank you, Father, my God, because whenever we call unto you, Lord, you are willing to answer and to show us great 
things that no eye has seen nor any ear has heard. Oh God, I pray that you teach us. Teach us, Lord, how to pray. Teach us, Lord, how to maintain our fellowship with you. Teach us, mighty God, how to seek your face. How to seek you. Because, Lord, those who seek you, they find you, my God. Help us, mighty God. Give us the grace to operate in our prayer life. Give us the grace to move in prayers for your glory and your honor in the mighty name of Jesus. We exalt you. We love you. We bless your name for your God in Jesus mighty name somebody say amen somebody say amen may the Lord God bless you thank you so much for coming may the Lord God bless you if you have your offering uh, you can drop it here uh, those that are watching online uh, those that are watching online our number for Mpesa will be displayed in the name of Jesus, you can do your giving, you can do your tithe, and the Lord God will bless you. <clears throat> the Lord God will bless you. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow is on Thursday, we are here, and the man of God, evangelist, uh, uh, Michael Maora, will be here pre uh, leading us into a powerful session, a powerful moment of prayer. A child of God, don't you miss on this one. Don't, don't you miss on this one. It's going to be powerful if you have any prayer request you are there you having any prayer request uh, kindly drop your prayer request uh, let the man of God know as he comes here uh, let him know let him know your prayer request and I know that as we will be praying as he will be leading us into, into these prayers uh, mighty things will be happening in the mighty name of Jesus on Friday on Friday on Friday again we will be here for lunch hour from 1 p.m. to 2 and later that evening from 4 p.m. to around 7 30 or 8 we will be here for a revelatory uh, a revelatory Friday revival meeting it is it is always usually powerful and I know that this one oh my god you have no idea so let us be there purpose to attend purpose to attend that meeting on Friday uh, on Friday from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, the prophet of God will be here. He will be ministering to us in a mighty special way. Invite a friend. Invite a friend in Jesus name on Sunday. On Sunday we are usually here from 8.30. From 8.30. So uh, if you have never been here. We welcome you. We welcome you. Our purpose to be here. And your life will never be the same again. May the Lord bless you. Have the best of uh, the best part of your day after this service. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Shalom, shalom, shalom.